Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the um, September 14th Planning Board meeting. Uh, those of you who are here in person and those who are watching uh, virtually, um, which is the first time we've gone virtual that when it's not uh, COVID. Uh, we actually did uh, virtual meetings entirely. They were entirely virtual during COVID. Uh, but uh, tonight we're going to do both, similar to the village board meetings which allows people uh, virtually to watch the meeting but not to ask questions. So they can follow along. Um, and actually, uh, the recording is available where you can go back and rewind it and watch it later or fast forward, uh, all kinds of uh, good stuff like that. Um, on our agenda tonight, the first item is to approve the May 11th, 2023 and July 13th, 2023 draft minutes. I believe I've commented on uh, both of those, so I don't have any further comments. Um, they're, they're, they're already uh, incorporated? Yeah, no, well, we haven't voted on the May 11th. No, no, just making sure that you, your comments oh, are already Oh, our comments, there. yeah, and you've, I think you've already commented, yep. okay. Jill, so, excuse as well. Me, Ray, on the July minutes, I don't think we'll be able to vote because the war was happening at the I would too, right. so it was, we only had a quorum. Oh, yeah, we can't. Okay, we can't vote on the July minutes because we don't have three people here tonight who were at that meeting. Right. But so we we'll be voting on the May minutes. Any, you have any comments? All right, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's approved. Next item on the agenda is to talk about the Suffolk County uh, Village Officials Association training session uh, available for planning board members that's being held on October 10th uh, between 5:30 and 9 30 p.m. Uh, do you need to say anything about that other than we're, we're all available or aware of it and uh, anybody who's uh, going to attend has already expressed interest I think so uh, that's that's the next uh, training session that's available for planning board officials also for zoning board officials I yep. would assume Okay, um, we have a Town of Brookhaven project, uh, Setauket Meadows, and that public hearing on that is October 3rd of 2023. I think, what's the history on that? We wanted to be kept informed of when the public hearing was. Uh, I believe the project, which is on the north side of Sheep Pasture Road, um, North side. No, you're right. North, north side, side adjacent to the yeah. railroad. It's on the um, right side. Yeah. Took me in. North side of Sheep Pasture at the intersection of Pulse Landing Road. That's a residential project. It was previous. I think the entire project was previously approved, and they wanted to change the unit mix. I think the number of bedrooms or something had to do with that. Uh, we were asked uh, to make comments. We said we'd like to be kept aware of the public hearing so that we might be able to attend or at least follow up on the results of the public hearing. The project is not in the village of Port Jefferson, um, but there is traffic that could be generated by that project that could go through the village. So that's why we have an interest. And it's adjacent to the uh, village boundary, which is the railroad in that area. So the village is automatically kept informed because we're within, I believe it's 500 feet of the, um, it's within 500 feet of the village, uh, village line. Next planning board meeting is on Thursday, October 12th, 2023. If we have any public hearings, we'll be holding that hearing, uh, that meeting here. Uh, right now we're starting with a general work session. At 6.30, we'll go up on the dais uh, for the public hearing. And after that public hearing, we'll come down, down here and resume the work session until we conclude. We have a, those of you, I think the agenda's available in the back of the room. Is that true or not? Yeah, if you need one, you have them. Um, in addition to the public hearing, there's one, two, three, four, five, six items on the agenda tonight. If we do not have a public hearing and there is notice published, um, I believe it's published both on the village website and also in the newspaper, that there will be a public hearing on the next um, planning board meeting. If you don't see that, then we don't have a public hearing and the meeting will be 
um, at the planning and zoning department on North Country Road in the meeting room there, which is um, where we normally hold meetings. Okay, so we'll jump ahead because we need to start the public hearing at 6.30. That's a uh, set time to start the public hearing. So we'll, we'll move on to the first item on the work session agenda. And Cindy, if you just read in the information on that, it would be helpful. You're moving on to Five Deerfield Court? Five Deerfield Court. Yeah. Okay. Five Deerfield Court Site Development Plan Retaining Wall and Deck, application number 0647-23. Tax map number is section 14, block 5, lot 45, zoning RB1 residential district. Applicant Amelia and Joseph Fontana. Property owner Giuseppe, also known as Joseph and Amelia Fontana trustees. Description, applicant proposes to replace an existing retaining wall and deck and the action amended referral letter of July 18th, 23 to the ZBA requesting west side variance. Okay, so this, this is Rich Harris. Uh, Village planner for this evening. Village planner, <laughs> uh, temporarily. <laughs> so th this project at Five Deerfield Court, this belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Fontana. Ms. Fontana is here in the audience today. This is a retaining wall that extends the entire width of her backyard. It connects up to a deck. It actually uh, went right up to the property line on the east side of the property and the west side of the property. The retaining wall was falling down completely, which means the deck was falling down too. Um, they came to us looking for a building permit, so we have to come to the planning board. It, unfortunately, it became an emergency situation where it was coll truly collapsing. We had to go out there to look at it. What we had to do was issue an emergency permit in order for them to stabilize the wall, which means to get it up and running to get started. They already had plans submitted to us. I think a portion of it is in the report that we gave mm -hmm. to you, just the detail of how it was built. And it, it, was, it was done perfectly. Um, it's a large wall. When it first came to us, it was going to replace exactly the way it stands now, which means on the east side, it's right on the property line. In order to do that, they would have needed to get a variance from the ZBA. Since there was an emergency situation, we couldn't see ourselves issuing a building permit that was in violation of our zoning code. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they made a decision to forget about it and give up those extra five feet. They brought it inside, gave up some of the property, and it was fine. For, so we said, great, you don't have to go to the ZBA. Unfortunately, once they got to the work on the site, on the west side, that part started collapsing. That cannot be brought back to within the five foot step setback because that's integral to holding up the entire property. So, unfortunately, they had to then come back to get their variance from the other side of the property. So that's where we are here today. The wall is actually being built right now under an emergency building permit, along with an outside emergency building agreement, much like we did for one Quinton Court, when it came down because of the, the illegal contractor. So we've gotten that in place now. It's being inspected by our village building inspectors as it goes. The job is going fine. Um, so right now, they would have come to you for the site plan for the wall with the full secret, but we now need a variance again. So Ms. Fontana is here today. What we're looking now is to refer this to the ZBA just for the one variance. If you look at the report, somehow it was written up as two, as two bullet points, top of page two, I think. Yeah. Um, probably the plan is right there. It's actually, it's only one variance. Um, that's the 250-28A1B2, which is that a passive accessory use cannot be more than more than five feet from any, within five feet of any lot line. That's the variance needed, and that's referring just to the west side yard setback. The right side, that one that got within the five feet, so that's done. So we're looking today just for the referral to the ZBA. Okay. And you have a draft referral letter there. We do, which we just updated. Did you get the new one there? You I did. have a so that's, that's the updated yeah. one, just one variance on it, one bullet point. Right. So we're hoping to get that signed tonight so we can get that out for the next meeting. Okay, so we had a prior staff report on this, which um, had recommendations, and in general, other than obtaining a building permit and certifications required by the building inspector, there's no uh, additional conditions, basically. So no, it's, no it's straightforward. Yes, so she, she already um, gave us the, uh, the surety bond for the full amount of the job, which she was okay. to, able to get. To, it's a oh, big job. Okay. So 
building permits in, plans have been approved by the engineer, and they have a good contractor on the job, fully licensed, insured, so we're, we're up and running already. Okay, so all we need is the, uh, to complete the whole uh, just the CBA. review, we just need the ZBA. Right, uh, so we'll get that. And they meet, you know? Um, that would be the second or third week in October. October. So, we've got, so okay. we've got time to get the notifications out. And uh, Ms. Ms. Fontana is already aware of the notification to get it for Cave and, and for the sign that she gets from us. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Anybody so have any, have any questions? questions? So it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. All good. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So do, you okay. Just, do we just need a motion? Just a motion to, to refer to the CBA. Yeah. Oh, I can, yeah, if we have them. Right. You, you've got yeah. one right there, in fact. I can so. sign a blank. Yeah. Yeah. Please sign. <laughs> wow, let's <laughs> get <it>. <laughs> But I'll keep <laughs> that with you. I'll make, make a motion, motion to, to refer <laughs> this to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank yeah, you. I will sign the letter. And I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it to you right now so we don't lose it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are you next again? Or um, I think next is 99 Pine Hill. 99 Pine Hill Road. Tom. Joe on these, unfortunately yeah. he's uh, a little ill. So, um, I got some familiarity with them, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. The uh, okay. 99 Pine Hills, uh, the applicant had uh, applied for a tree clearing uh, improvement that was performed without um, prior application approval. They removed the trees. Approximately six trees were removed from the site, four trees in the front yard and two in the rear. The applicant stated that the trees were leaning against the house, or leaning towards the house, and were ivy covered, okay. um, not in good health. Um, Applicant proposes to add three new trees within the front yard, but has not yet specified the type or the uh, species. Okay. Um, or a detail on that. Um, basically, uh, yeah, we, we are requesting the application provide a uh, revegetation plan in the form of three new trees located within the front yard that could be done at uh, building permit level when mm -hmm. they apply for that permit. Um, and I would also recommend to the board that we get an understanding of what the clearing limits were done on this and make sure that they meet the requirement for the maximum. Yeah, do we have a... No. That's we, we do. No. So. John? Just join there the were wall. pictures in the report that was emailed to us. Oh, okay. Because okay. the whole front basically mm -hmm. was cleared. So I, I, I leave it to the boys' discretion to have that clearing drawing prepared and get an understanding how far they're clearing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the detail on the wood deck. Um, I had a question on that. Um, the removal of the existing wood railroad cut reti retaining walls mm -hmm. uh, was resting on that. And if they're removing that, how would they support what, What's going to happen with the ed edge detail on this deck? They can handle that at building department level, those details. I'm sorry, Tom. What was leaning on the deck? The, the deck was leaning on the old railroad tie retaining wall, the old okay. wood retaining walls that were there that are deteriorating. The details for the wall are adequate. They meet the requirements. They had the, the drainage material from up, almost up to the top that we can get, like the weep holes were put in. Um, I also do recommend to them, as this all leans down to here and they put in all the drainage and weeps, some sort of stormwater mitigation in here to protect their own home. But that's um, more of a design option. Mm -hmm. Where were the trees? They were all in the back here or up here? There were some in the front and some in the rear. Yes. Yeah, so we don't know which ones this they This is a very steep slope. Correct. So Correct. do we need them to have some sort of mitigation now for anything that might slide off? Well, I mean, I, there's a recommendation in them for the do the uh, prepare an erosion control plan as well. Yeah. They should still fence this whole area back mm -hmm. here before that, I do any work. Yeah, I'm thinking sooner than later. You would think. So I'm going to make a recommendation that um, they submit further erosion information. Control, erosion control, replanting. stormwater management, uh, and a revegetation and clearing plan. Yeah. The deck details can be handled at building department level. It's okay. just support and structure. Okay. And they're pretty much putting back with what was there? It, no, it's a little bit different configuration. The walls came, came around here. 
it's basically in the same. Mm -hmm. They're shortening it up a little bit. Okay. And it sl all slopes down toward you. It all comes back towards the house here. So again, the house. this is okay. 15 feet of wall that's coming down here. Okay. So all this, any drainage material that comes in here is going to come out down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So would they put a, some sort of dry, dry well down there or okay. something? Yeah, I think it would protect the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they need to provide more information. Yes. And we can give them a memo. Yes. That, right? Yes. I have a. Okay. And this isn't an emergency situation, mm -hmm. is it? Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Okay. But, I mean, do we have any means of encouraging some sort of? Silk fence now. We do. We do it. It's within the board's control. It's within the code. Right. It, do you have the other report that I prepared, Sydney, on this one? That listed all the village, uh, the, the sections of the village code? I, I, mean, I got the old one from Joe on this one. It really seems slow. Yeah. And I, my concern is that all if it washes off, it goes into Pine Hill and it just goes straight down. Yeah, but but this is the slope oh, coming down to his house, to not from right. his property. Didn't, didn't, didn't they, they take yeah, the out trees yeah. in the front also? Yeah. And it, I mean, it's not as steep, but it looks fairly steep. It's fairly steep. No, there's a lot of topography on this side. I mean, this is two feet. To what's right. This. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then another two feet. And then just I'm just concerned if we have a bad rainstorm before. Yeah, no, there's, there's you know, I, I, I would like to see what was removed. Uh, as far as limits of clearing, and at that point, get an understanding that something needs to be done as far as green vegetation beyond three trees to stabilize the site. Yeah, or maybe see what's already there. I mean, in the picture, it looks like there's other vegetation there. Yep, on the photo, so it may have been taken out. When Leon came in, so I had prepared a separate report. Um, so the site disturbance pl in, in the code, the way this is written, the site disturbance plan clearly they need to in clearly indicate the following: the outline of the existing wooded areas and what has been removed. Uh, they got the topography, the location, the improvements they have, um, the color photographs. We need to get those from them. Yes. Yeah, so you know, again, this is all within the code. We, it's our discretion whether we need that or not. But I think on this one we should. Yeah. Um, a list of predominant plant species. We're asking for them what they're going to plant back to know what type of tree that oh whatever it may be mm -hmm. um, the locations of existing trees that exceed the nine inch caliber at three feet up that has to be clearly identified on there okay. um, and then the plan for installing erosion controls it's, so it is in here okay, okay. good yeah okay. right so they have they have a, a good deal of, well a good deal of work to add to, to add plan. more, more yeah, to yeah. Okay. The, the last recommendation <coughs> be a comprehensive plan including engineer drawings of the wall to be submitted prior to clearing of trees in order to prevent an emergency situation of collapse and uncontrollable runoff. Do you remember when the gentleman came in last time? This is back in September. A uh, fellow named Leon. Yes. He, and they he, we had originally met with him. We spoke to him on the phone. And his original intention was to take down between 39 and 45 trees. Right. So this is yeah. a lot about more clarity in the application. So he's, and finally got to the point. So he's just coming to the planning board show. And when he came in, it, all the bells clicked and he understood why we needed He said, my wife wants to get rid of these trees. So I, I said, yes. Oh, I and remember. I gave him yes. permission yes. to take down yeah. a couple of you, trees. Correct. Right. And, the reason, and, and there was a permanent issue <coughs> on that, too, on those couple so of trees. So then it took them down anyway? No, he took that one. We got a permit for those few trees okay. with the understanding that we need to do the trees and we need to retain them at the same time because they all go hand in hand. That's something <coughs> he didn't understand. Now right. he did, and he was, he was very thankful that we explained okay. that to him. So now he comes back with the wall and the trees all being done properly to hold it up. His whole intention was all just about the wall to begin with. Okay. But to, to Laura's point, um, there is a lot of the part, they're moving, removing trees in here. That does destabilize some of this area here without revegetation. So, yeah, as much as you put in the walls. So we need to understand what's being removed yeah. out there. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. A clear yeah. picture of what's going on with the site. Slopes. Yes. I mean, in this case here, you know, the only person at danger for anything is the homeowner. Which, yeah. But, you, you know, we're here to, as a measure of yeah. protection, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, when this is done, there is potential for significant runoff going down that street too. There, it's mm -hmm. a big hill where yep. you focus there. Yeah, and it could have downhill consequences on neighbors too. So yeah, the, the equivalent of a switch may be needed to make sure we have this. Well, I would say switch, like erosion yeah. control. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, equivalent. Run, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. 
So I'll put a, a memo out to the applicant um, mm -hmm. indicating the additional information that we need for the next meeting. Yep. Okay. That'd yeah, it'd be, be good if we can get that for the next meeting. Yeah. We can move forward. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for picking that up. From, uh, so. Okay, we're going to get a we got four minutes. I think that clock's Thanks. a little slow. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll stop for the public hearing. Okay. Um, we'll go up, up top. Can we leave this table where it is? is that okay? Yeah, why not? We'll leave the table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Right. yeah we'll yeah. just go up there. We'll <coughs> there. Yeah. Excuse me. Give this an order for a chance to set up. I have 6.30, so we'll get started with the public hearing. Just some um, housekeeping notes beforehand. The way this works and the way it's organized, Cindy uh, Suarez will read in the, um, 
notice of the public hearing, uh, location and the client, et cetera. Um, the applicant will come up and do a presentation. Um, the, the board will ask questions of the applicant. I'm sure we'll have a few questions. The applicant will respond to us. Um, at that point when those questions are all answered and resolved, um, we'll turn it over to the public. If you would like to comment, um, just put your hands up. Uh, I think we normally, uh, if we have a very, very crowded room, we limit the comments to a time period, a three minute period, and you might think three minutes, but it's not a very long time, but it, it kind of is. Uh, you can get, say, a lot in three minutes. Um, I don't think we're going to have a tremendous number, so I think we'll let everybody go. If it gets lengthy, um, we'll uh, maybe put a restriction on, on the time limit. We ask that you, uh, if you're going to agree with somebody else's comment, just come up and say that. You don't have to repeat the entire comment. Uh, you have the same concerns, so to speak. Um, I think most people probably know about this project, uh, offshore wind. Uh, you might think it's a big impact on the village. Um, you'll see with an explanation from the applicant that this may not be as a, a large component of the project or the potential to impact the village. I'll just leave it at that. But they're going to explain it in detail. We'll have, I know we'll have some questions. Um, so when you come up also, you'll get sworn in by the um, stenographer on the side here. Uh, so you'll be just asked to give your name and address and, and, and be sworn in. Um, if you're an attorney, you do not need to be sworn in. Um, and I guess that's all I'm going to say about that at this point. So Cindy, if you would read in the, uh, the announcement. 700 Beach Street, whoops, site plan amendment, application number 0645-23. Tax map number is section 7, block 1, lot 1.1. Zoning WP Waterfront Public Utility. Property owner is National Grid Generation LLC. The applicant is Orsted Wind Power North America LLC. Contact Harris Beach PLLC, care of John J. Anzalone Esquire. Description, proposed site plan amendment for site improvements and the addition of four eight-foot by 20-foot prefabricated office trailers solely for use in conjunction with the applicant's offshore wind farm operations. Action tonight is a public hearing, and I have received the certified mail receipts and the affidavit of mailing and posting of the property. Okay, before we get started with the presentation, I just would ask when you come up and make comments also that you address the board. Um, we don't want to get into a, a, a back and forth with the applicant like if you even, even have a question for the applicant, please relay it to us. We'll ask them. It just keeps order in the hearing. It stops side talking and stops side conversations. Um, the stenographer is trying to record everything, so it really gets, uh, gets crazy. So that's the way we set that up. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to come up, just introduce yourself, and you'll need to get sworn in, unless you're an attorney. I am an attorney, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Village Planning Board. Uh, John Anzalone for Harris Beach, PLLC, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Suite 901, Uniondale, New York, 11553. Attorneys for the applicant. Thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation to you tonight. I'm here with respect to Orsted Wind Power North America LLC's application for amended site plan approval in order to permit an approximately once a month unloading and loading of one service operations vessel and an existing pier, which is the northerly pier on the image in front of you, uh, located at the National Grid Generation Plant at 700 Beach Street, Port Jefferson, New York. Such activities are required in connection with maintaining Orsted's offshore wind facilities to be located in federal waters on the outer continental shelf, pursuant to leases from the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management and New York State Energy uh, Research and Development Authority Offshore Wind Renewable Energy Certificate Agreements. As a matter of housekeeping, as uh, was noted, the affidavits of bailing and posting were submitted prior to tonight's hearing. As indicated in the plans filed before this application, Orsted is leasing 2,950 square feet of the National Grid facility. Such area is located immediately next to the existing pier on the site and is already disturbed and covered by gravel, allowing the applicant to avoid removing uh, vegetation. There is one existing mature tree in the area and it will be maintained. As part of the improvements, the applicant will also be replacing certain dead vegetation 
with new vegetation within uh, new and expanded planters. All access for the monthly crew changeover will be routed through the internal drive aisle through a National Grid's property so as to avoid adding any traffic onto Beach Street. This access requires passing through National Grid's security gate, which is located approximately 260 feet onto the property from Route 25A. Through this access, two mini buses or sprinter buses will bring the crew to and from 22 Research Way and East Atawket, where the crew will make arrangements to be dropped off and picked up. At this time, I'd like to offer Courtney O'Reilly of BHB to walk through the site plan prepared by our office, including the location of the limited improvements and new landscaping. Courtney, please identify yourself for the record. Courtney Riley, 100 Motor Parkway, Suite 350, Hop Hog, New York, 11780. Do we have attorney? No. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Um, so today we are going to talk about Orsted. Um, I am going to start with the 22 research way. So where we are starting from and where that existing is, and I've put on a map here so you can see the route that the buses would take. Um, to avoid any on-site parking, as John said, we are going to have about 20 to 25 to 35 crew members. And so with that, to avoid any parking on-site in the village, um, they would be parking at 22 Research Way and would travel north. Um, and then would, once they got to Main Street, would go through the National Grid entrance. Um, so as you could see, the buses would traverse onto the existing property through the existing entrance and then come onto site. So these are the sprinter vans. There'll be uh, one, probably one to two sprinter vans depending on the amount of crew that would be coming. That existing van would uh, go into the existing parking lot. Uh, as you can see, they, they would be parked there. Um, then the crew would walk onto the pier and enter where the SOV would be. Uh, the area that we are talking about is this area right here. So it's 2,950 square feet. So as you could see, it's located right next to the pier. Um, in this area, we would have the four trailers. And so just to give you, uh, again, where this is. So here we have our pier. That was that entrance. This is the existing gravel way. And if you see that white truck, that's essentially where the first trailer would be. And the existing tree that's located is that one right there. So that, those four trailers would sit in between essentially where that light post is and the existing vegetation. Uh, these port calls will be between 6 to 12 hours, um, weekday during business hours. Um, and additionally, so the SOV would sit, again, on, on the wharf. You have our lease area, and a bus would be essentially right in that corner over there. So on the, western, on the eastern edge of the lease area, there's a two-foot-tall planter bed. Uh, it did have some dead vegetation. Um, so we are going to be extending that, uh, that two-foot planter. You could actually see that same white truck right there. It's where that first... Um, that first trailer would be sitting. Um, we're going to extend it by about 10 feet. We are going to have the uh, 16 Emerald Sentinel Eastern Red Cedar Evergreen Trees. Um, these are known for its salt tolerance and, and windbreak screens. Uh, these are a native species that is drought tolerant. Um, they will require some temporary irrigation, which means that they would just be watered um, over a year's time for establishment period. Um, and they will be installed at 10 to 12 feet. So installed going in at 10 to 12 feet. Um, and then over time could get anywhere between 15 to 20 feet. The service operating vessel, as you see here, is 262 feet in length. Um, this is similar in length to the ferry. Uh, the ferry ranges between their different uh, vessels uh, between 280 and 300 feet in length. Um, and it is an existing, existing pier, uh, as we know, that National Grid uses. And their uh, barge that comes there uh, ranges uh, is about 400 feet um, with a tug. 
tug's about 100 feet. So uh, this is a smaller vessel than is already operating at there today. Um, McLaren Engineering completed multiple studies. Um, and in this, their studies, which was an above water inspection, underwater inspection, bathymetric survey, survey, bollard testing inspections, mooring analysis, and structural analysis of the pier, they determined that there was no uh, improvements needed to the pier other than painting some of the bollards uh, to ensure that there be no further corrosion. Um, and we also confirmed that there were no uh, additional dredging needed. Um, the, the area is deep enough. As you can see, these other uh, vessels that are there are either similar in size um, when it comes to beam and depth. So we did do some visual analysis. We wanted to make sure that from what we would be placing there, but what would be seen uh, was is a similar visual impact. So as you can see here, this is in the water facing the leasing area. Um, and you can see after we put our vegetation in, which is these little trees right here, we put the visual impact study that we did, we put it in as well the trees are planted. So again, planted at 10 to 12 feet. Um, we're not planting them when they grow to a, a larger thing. And you, as you could see on the next, oops, sorry, just back. Now it's going to go 12 slides ahead. Let's see. Thank you, Daniela. All right. So as you can see there, those red, con those red outlines is actually the shape of the container. So um, we have a lot of existing vegetation that's outside the fence line, that's on the water line, that's remaining. Um, and then we're adding additionally some vegetation where there was plantings, um, which is kind of like where the little tops are there. Um, and so uh, it would remain screened. Um, so you'd have the same visual impact as, as you do today. Next slide. So some of the other views, uh, location two was at the ends of the pier, location three was from the marina. Uh, again, same visual impact. These are uh, eight feet by 20 feet uh, and, and small in nature. Again, this is a, a view from the water. And these are the bollards I was discussing previously where you would there be painted. Mr. Chairman, that completes my presentation, and we'll take any questions as needed. Okay. Um, just to um, maybe just go over some of what you said. So you got 25 to 35 crew members are going to come, and they're coming every two weeks, is that? Uh, once a month. Once a month. Once a month. Okay. And they all come in a bus? They all come in the sprinter vans, yes. Okay. And the trailers are used for strictly for storage of materials? So we're going to have one trailer that would likely have uh, be for office um, use. Um, we confirmed that we would not be using um, the sanitary would be taken on and off as needed, um, and we would not have any generator use. So the trailers that we'd be using would be connected to electric uh, located already on site, um, so not to generate any additional noise. The other trailers will likely have any parts that are needed, so when the crew is transferring, if they have parts mm -hmm. or things, um, again, the 22 research way is where the, the warehouse is. Um, so these parts would be small in nature, things that they would just want to take to service the, uh, the vessel. Okay. Or um, I mean, so there's no blades or anything. <laughs> Those no, sir. blades are, are huge. And the size of the trailers, they seem to be, the way they're indicated there, they seem to be the size of a, of a large parked car. That's correct. So if you could see, actually, if, uh, you know, if you could pull back the, up, there was a... If you go to the existing, um, yeah, so you can see here the size of them is uh, almost typical to that uh, a large pickup truck. Okay. Um, I think uh, we probably, those are all the basic questions I had, but there's been some information, I guess, locally in the papers. I don't know if you have somebody who can talk about that, about 
maybe the project's being delayed, there's some financing issues, there's a request to um, near NYSERDA for additional, it's gonna cost additional money to construct the project. Um, I thought I heard something about one of the partners pulling out, so it, any impact on schedule at this point or any any plans to address that? I guess that's that's something that I think the public may have seen in the papers, so. So we, yeah. we do have representatives from Orsted here, um, but I will let them answer as far as you know, everything is on track. Hi there. I should Hi. say my name and Jennifer Garvey. I'm the head of uh, New York Market Strategy for Orsted. Do you swear or affirm sell truth about another I, I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll just. I'll repeat the questions that I heard and, and answer them, yes? Okay, uh, sure. So you had some questions about, yes, there's been, you acknowledge that there's been some, some news in the paper about um, our project and some of the, uh, the cost, increases in costs that have been, um, that have been discussed that are affecting the project. And so I'll, I, can, I can relay that, I can share that uh, we have, um, yes, of course, that's true. Um, <laughs> It has been well documented, and uh, we we are in the process of asking the state. We've um, we have uh, submitted petitions with the state public service commission, uh, requesting some contractual adjustments uh, to to assist our our business case. Um, the process is ongoing. Um, at the moment, we are for the purposes of of Port Jefferson and what this might mean for the community and the timeline of our project. I'd say that you know we remain committed to. To, to building Sunrise Wind and to, to keeping the project going, obviously getting through that public hearing process, um, you know, that, that, that petition process I mentioned is very important to our project, uh, reaching its final investment decision, but we, at the moment, are, you know, moving as we've planned on schedule, and so um, it, it shouldn't have any effect on, uh, you know, today's discussion. Okay, and, and this facility is just serving Sunrise Wind only, or is there another? So the offshore. surface operation vessel would actually service other projects that we're building. It, it would serve our entire portfolio of, of turbines in the northeast. Mm -hmm. So that um, would include Revolution Wind and also South Fork Wind, which is under construction now. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it obviously links to the the, uh, the operations and maintenance headquarters that we've located in East Atocket, that 22 Research Way facility that was mentioned. Okay. Would that change the the schedule of, you know, once a month type? No, the once a month schedule is for the entire portfolio. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other board members have questions? I don't. I did. I did a question. Oh, okay. Question for court. You should turn your. Sorry. All right. Okay. Um, so it looks like the only access is through the national grid off of 25A. That's so. That's correct. Will there be any traffic on Beach Street? or any of the side streets back behind on the residential side of National Grid? No, so the when we met uh, early with the village on this project, it was very specific that Beach Street need to remain. As you know, there is an entrance on Beach Street to National Grid, um, and obviously that would have been closer, right, for our, our, uh, our sprinter vans, um, but Orsa has committed um, and National Gr Grid has agreed that this would be the only entrance for the sprinter vans. They will not access Beach Road. And then let's just say someone from Port Jefferson gets a job and says, oh, hey, I, I'd love to have this job. Well, I don't want to drive all the way down to Research Way, park my car only to come back. Um, it, will you allow any of those 20 to 30 people to self-transport Right now, that is not the intention. Okay. Um, it's not part of the lease area. Um, that being said, if we did have to change any of these things, we would have to come before you again okay. to, to change that. So that's pretty much there, there is an existing parking lot, but that existing parking lot is for National Grid employees. Okay. Hello, uh, sir. Two questions, quick. One, the trailer sizes again, what were they? Eight by 20. And then, as far as the cedars, will there be a maintenance period, like a you know, yearly maintenance that after a year they've come back or they're not? So, so typically for the contracting period is once the plant is accepted, 
on the landscape contract. It's a one-year contract after establishment. Um, that being said, you know, if anything happens to them as part of the lease area, they would have to maintain that. Courtney, the, the people that are working here, mm -hmm. are they actually local residents or, because uh, a lot of times you get Mariner people, you know, um, that live away and just come for a job and then leave again. Are, are these people who actually live here? So the once, the once a month is because these folks are going out there. They're going out to the different wind farm components. They're working on the wind farms, and then they're coming back for a month. So um, where those people are going to come from, I don't think we necessarily know that. However, you know, I know it is the intention as, you know, this energy comes to Long Island is to hopefully educate and get more people into working um, in this facility, in, in this field, really, to be honest. And the work that's done here uh, if I understand the young lady correctly, mm -hmm. um, that they're going to be working on multiple wind projects, not just the ones that are on the South Shore, off of the South Shore? So this is a service vessel. So right now, um, the wind farms that are being built um, are being built by lots of people, right? They're, they're out there and they're building. The hopefully is to construct, obviously, Sunrise, South Fork Wind Farm is already under construction. And then there's also, as, as she said, Revolution Wind. Um, once these are operational, this vessel is a service, like almost like a maintenance truck, right? So that, that service vessel is going to go out there and do any of the maintenance that's required or necessary to, for those wind farms that are already built. So just to clarify, this is not for people building those actual wind farms. It's for the maintenance and service of the wind farms once they're constructed. Okay. and, and um the the people who are doing this work uh, during like the winter, there's some place warm for them to be. Uh, so one of those trailers. Exactly. So that's the point of that that first um, service vessel, and and it should be noted uh, that first uh, trailer. It should also be noted that as part of this one, that that SOV does pull up, that the engines are shut off. Um, so that they are not sitting there for those six to twelve hours that are are constantly running. We're really cognizant of noise, um, even to the point of with that office trailer, which we will have that first one being an office trailer, mm -hmm. that there will be no generator that we would connect to the existing electric that's already there. Okay, and you, you had mentioned something about I interpreted as porta potties, and there'll be that. So that office trailer would have a bathroom. Okay, and they'll come and empty it out and as needed. Okay, thank you very much. Of course. So, so the actual, no, I'm sorry, are you, you're Oh, yes, good? thank you. So the actual supplies, though, are over in uh, Research Way, right? So all the major supplies would be in Research Way. The other trailers that would be there would maybe house. We just wanted to have definitely one, I'll say, office trailer that someone mm -hmm. would be able to sit in. It could be air conditioned in the summer, something of that nature. So there may be a, tr a tractor trailer bringing over supplies to the... It would be a box truck. Um, box. The box truck mm -hmm. would come maybe every two to three months within that same time, right? Because it's with that, that true tr transfer, right? So if, if they're coming to fix something that's out in the water, they would mm -hmm. need some of those parts. Okay. Um, that would be about every two to three months um, with that same, and it would be a box truck. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think I have anything. Anybody else come up, follow up questions? No? Okay. All right. We'll uh, take some questions from the public. Again, if you come up, uh, just give your name and address. You'll get sworn in. Um, ask your questions to the board. Either, either we can answer them because of what we've heard already from the presentation, or we'll ask the applicant to come up and, and answer them. But every, everything will take place at the mic so everybody can hear, including the people at home. So I think what I'll do is I'll take any hands on that side of the room. Anybody would like to come up? And we'll, I'll recognize you one by one. You can come up to the mic and uh, ask any questions or, or give any comments that you have. On that side of the room, anybody would like to come up and speak? Just raise your hand. Okay. Seeing none, I'll go to the other side. Anyone on the other side of the room would like to come up and speak? Okay, in the back.
Hi, thank you. My name is Kieran Sinclair. I live uh, 101 Hoyt Lane. Hoyt Lane? Yes. Please recognize me, C Square or Burnside Church. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm uh, wondering with the windmill farm, is there going to be, like, I'm wondering where is the power going to be connected to? Is it going to go to LIPA directly, or where exactly? Like, can we expect to see any economic benefit in terms of the power cost or anything like that? Or I'm wondering, like, um, by like you know by supporting this um, project, I mean, are we going to see benefits in terms of like power and that sort of thing? Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know who on the team would like to answer that question. Rock paper scissors. Stand by. Okay. So. To get to that question, as far as the physical location of the uh, electric, it is coming into Long Island. It's actually, for a sunrise wind, it's coming into Smith Point County Park. It then travels up uh, the William Floyd Parkway, goes uh, across some local roads in Brookhaven uh, before it's converted uh, at the onshore converter station, which is actually in Holbrook, and which is currently under construction. Uh, with respect to South Fork wind, that is actually going to be uh, landing in East Hampton, and there's also a uh, substation in East Hampton that we'll be tying into. As far as power, south and sunrise wind alone has enough generation to, uh, I think it's 500,000 houses at peak generation. That's, how, that's its max capacity. Uh, south Fork wind is considerably smaller, but it also will be, I think it's about uh, it 40,000? I think it's about 40,000 houses for that one. So it's 540,000 combined. Okay. So in terms of the rate or the impact on rates, it should, they should go down? Theoretically, yes. That's our hope. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Okay. Anybody else have a question on that side of the room? Okay, we have a delayed question on this side. Come on up. Uh, my name is Thomas Lee. I live at 24 Chestnut Avenue, East of Talk. Where, where I do. Yeah, so my question is um, I see in the map um, where the four trailer was. But I wasn't able to see further up, which is the village of Pokwa, which sits on the fence line right there. So is there a uh, map that could show where that is compared to where the actual location of the trails are? I think probably, Courtney, on an aerial view, you can probably indicate that. Yeah. So we might want to go back to the first slide. So here, the first slide. Um, again, so if, if uh, you see the pier, um, again, the leasing area is essentially right in front of that pier. Um, yeah, I got to get my laser out. Sure. All right, so here's that pier where that SOV would be parked, okay. almost directly, mm, directly across from there. Do you see that white on the pier? That would be right where the lease area is. Courtney, can you please show the gentleman where Poquad is in relation to that? To the north. Is that, do you see that, Mr. Lee? Yes, uh, I'm way on that line right here. So, so it's, um, I, I would say maybe a hundred, maybe 150 feet from my house. Um, the other question I have was. Oh, you come on up to the mic if you have a follow up. So my second question was the um, ship that's going to be coming into that pier. Are there any uh, environmental impacts uh, from, you know, this cargo or whatever, if something happens, you know, uh, that would affect uh, the village and uh, Port Jeff as well? Are you talking about in case there's any hazardous uh, yeah, aspects like, like of the cargo, storm. if something falls in the water or something like that? Yep. You know, oh, okay. capsize, anything like that. Okay. I don't know who wants to handle that. Uh, so this this service vessel, which you could uh, always find online, is one of the state-of-the-art vessels. It's built, being built right now, currently, um, and it is, it is one of the first of its kind. Um, it's being built down in Louisiana, and it, and it, it is one of the state-of-art. Um, the intention, obviously, always is, is to ensure the safety of not only the, the personnel, but also the environment, um, and they would maintain that. Uh, there are certain protocols, as you know, with any maritime uh, facilities and vessels, and they would maintain those. All right. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, over here. Hi, I'm Tina Chiaffi. I'm the mayor of Pokwa. Hi. 
Sorry, I'm a little bit late, um, and you probably went through this already, but um, I, I we have. I think you, you need to be sworn in. Oh, sorry. Sure, I do. Um, we have a preserve that's in between um, the the power plant and Polquat. Um, it's the Steve Matthews Preserve, which is maintained by the Three Village Trust. Have they been? involved in any of this? Were they given the variance information? Because it, it's prior to butting to this gentleman's house, it butts to another piece of land in between. Is, Do you is, have any familiarity with that? Is it, po is it possible you can indicate that on the, with, a, with a laser pointer? Oh, okay. On so it? That would help. This one? Yeah. Okay, so here's the, here, here's the towers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's this, it's all this land here, right, mm, okay, right behind it, um, and, and that's one of our streets where this gentleman lives. You're on Chestnut, yes. you're on the end of Chestnut, yeah. right under the towers, right? So it's, it's, it's that land in between. It's a, it's a nature preserve um, that I guess Nat Grid, Poquot has a stake in it. It's partially Poquot land. It's partially Port Jefferson land, and it's partially Nat Grid land. And the Three Village Preserve maintains that. And I'm just curious if the Three Village Preserve, I, I, I know that a lot of our residents got the um, letters posted for the variance or for this hearing, but I'm curious to know if the Three Village Preserve Society was also included, because being the location, I think that that's important that they should have been advised if they weren't or they should be included in this. Okay. Can I see it? I, I can answer the question. Okay. Yeah. So first and foremost, just to, to answer your question, I don't know if you saw it, <coughs> saw it or not as far as the location of where this is. Um, right, but as, as far as the, the application that's before us, it's on uh, 2,950 square feet. That's on the existing national grid property um, in an existing uh, gravel area. Um, the area that you're speaking of is, as you say, uh, you know, right over to the side. Um, and as part of the, the public hearing process, um, all the facilities, all the tax lots um, were notified within a 500 foot radius. Um, I would have to look specifically, um, but as part of the CEQRA process um, with the village of Port Jeff taking the lead agency of CEQRA, if there was anyone to comment on that, they would take in that as well. Um, not sure if that answers your question. Uh, we, I guess you should check to see if a mailing went to them. Okay. And I guess you have a, you have a, uh, a trust owner, right, that you can contact. Back to the answer. I'm trying to read the 147 properties. Okay. The short answer why she's looking for it is uh, the the village requires us to mail notice to whoever is right. the owner of right. record on the tax map, uh, right. the tax records maintained by uh, either the uh, village of Port Jefferson or the town of Brookhaven, and the town of Brookhaven is would be at that. So we get the assessment roll from because it's outside the village of Port Jefferson. So if they were the owner. It's whoever was the owner is who gets the notice, which I believe is uh, National Grid top of my head. Yeah, that, is, that is true. And it's, it's Marcus Fan Generation LLC, Chestnut Avenue, utility provider. So it was noticed to the. But the village trust that maintains the, the, the preserve. Yeah, I, I'm just, I mean, I, I'm just trying to do due diligence for my village. So the three village trust that maintains, they, they do maintain that preserve. Mm -hmm.
If you why don't you just summarize at the mic, that would be good. In case any anybody uh, listening at okay. at home. Sorry, um, what I was saying was that the three village it, it's a co op pro uh, the area is owned by Nat Grid, but the maintenance of that land is part of a co op project mm -hmm. with the three village preserve. There is some land there that is Poquats, which I know you notified the residents who own it, but the village that owns the village land wasn't, I don't think, notified. And I think that um, the Three Village Preserve Society should have, you know, be able to chime in. It's a significant amount of land that they manage and maintain, and I just would like them to be involved. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, so I think what we could offer is that if uh, um, we obviously did all the notices, they are counted, but mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. To her point, um, you know, we're absolutely willing to go and present um, in front of any of the village or any of the other trustees that w uh, weren't able to attend tonight. This uh, presentation, I believe, is also being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this presentation is also being recorded uh, live and can be seen later also. So if they have any questions, they could also reach out to us as well. Okay. Yeah, they should be contacted. I think that's consensus. And they have uh, 30 days to submit some sort of written comment that will be on the record. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. I think that's the best way to handle that. Any other questions? I have one more, but I just thought, uh, go ahead, come on up. My name is Constantine. I live at uh, 115 Hoyt Lane, which is the last house on the Hoyt Lane and closest to the plant. If mm -hmm. you would please go, oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Shestakov. S H E S T A K O V. Yeah, if you would please, yeah, keep that slide. I just want to make sure that's the accurate map for the route because I live in that last house. Um, if you have a waiver point. One right here. Okay. And um, we actually see trucks from time to time going here this way. I'm sorry, it's not, you can't see it. Um, if you want to, I can go to the map and show you exactly how the tracks are going. One this one? Yeah. And I don't know, I've never been on the other side and I don't know if that's the actual route or projected because the one we're dealing with is going this way. Okay, and I have a neighbor who's not here today, but she expressed her concern as well. She lives here. As um, far as a couple of weeks ago, there was some maintenance going on or something, and she actually sent a complaint to National Grid. Uh, they didn't respond yet as far as tonight. So there was some concern about the noise, and uh, I missed the beginning of the presentation. And I'd like to know how many times during the day, a week, or a month you expect in trucks or shuttle buses going back and forth and if you could confirm please if that's the actual route and if they not go and go this way because i believe there's a road here that they can use as well so it's plan No, it's much closer, I can tell you that. Right. So my fence is here, and the road right goes along with the fence. Mm -hmm. They even, uh, yeah, got rid of all the brushes there and everything. It's pretty white. If you get close to the fence, you see it. Like, you don't have to look for it. So that's my, that's my question. Is it actually going to go this way, or are they going to make this left to avoid our houses here? Okay. So the buses will follow the existing roadway, which is entered off of Main Street here to the south. And this is a uh, paved roadway that goes through the property that um, the two buses would be maintained. And how often do It's uh, once a month. And do you expect any delivery trucks? I think if you have more questions, you should pro probably come up so people, people can follow and hear, hear you. 
should we expect more traffic for delivery trucks? Or like if they need to bring more parts or take something out, like garbage or something else? Because I assume that's the only road they're going to use. So the traffic is going to increase. My question is by how much? I think we got an answer on the on the supplies anyway coming, but I don't know about any other deliveries that would be there no, or it's, garbage it's in, or anything like that. Yeah, so the, the crew transfer, uh, again, once a month. Mm -hmm. um, any supplies, we anticipate any between two to three, every two to three months, and it would be at the same time as the crew, tra crew transfer. Okay. Uh, While you're there, Courtney, so again, just to s really make sure that you guys know, can you let them g give them an estimated time during the day? I mean, is it five in the morning? Is sure. it six at night? So all the operations are, all the buses would be coming during the weekday um, during daylight hours. Uh, it is the crew transfer is between six, uh, six hours to 12 hours. Ideally, obviously, for anything when it comes to crew and transferring, um, the daylight hours are, are the best. And they would operate within the uh, the village parameters as far as timing. Okay. All right. I see two hands up in the back of the room. Who wants to go first? Good evening. Uh, Drew Biondo, 115 Jones Avenue, Port Jefferson. Uh, I do. Uh, trustee for the village of Port Jefferson. Regarding this resident's complaint, I was the one who fielded one of the concerns from the residents about the noise. It was not National Grid, and they have representatives here today also. I think they're going to come up next to just clarify what grids roll and, and what's, um, what Orsteds and, uh, will be. Um, that noise was caused by maintenance on the Northville pipeline that runs through that property. Um, bad timing because this was coming, so everybody thought that it had something to do with what Orsted was going to be doing. Uh, I was in touch with one of your neighbors, and forgive me, but I don't remember her name. It, yes. Um, I got back to her and asked if it, the noise had abated. She said it got a little lower this week, but I think Northville is still testing their pipeline. And what I said was uh, once it abates, we will contact Northville and tell them what's going on and get your concerns addressed. And one of the things that they did, your your fellow resident did ask for is perhaps some sound barrier vegetation. We'll see what we can do about that. But it's not grid and it's not the wind folks. Okay. Okay? And we're always here. Somebody else got involved. Somebody else got involved. Yeah. Okay. Does National Grid want to come up uh, and say something or not? Or is it, did I cover it? Um, my name is Karen Menninger. I live 311 High Street in Port Jefferson. I work. Um, I work for National Grid. Uh, the project that was going on, it does appear to be a road, but it's actually just a right of way that Northville maintains because they have the pipeline under there. Um, it's usually just um, an inspection point for their pipeline. There's not truck traffic regularly back there at all. Um, I don't know, do you have any other questions? Yeah, so what's that? It's a separate issue. <laughs> Come on up again. It's a separate issue, I guess, and we have to address it with the village. There is uh, concern regarding air quality because there is some, you know, natural gas odor coming out randomly, and it's, you know, we, we can't figure out what it's all about. They came last night to check the pipe, and they assured us that the pipe is okay, but there's something coming, you know, from the plant itself, and we can't figure out what it is. I and mean, like I said, it's probably a different issue. It's not yeah. related. Okay. Yeah. I guess we're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Drew, you want to come back? Just follow up. I, we did address that with um, the operators also. Um, and they said that if it were a gas leak, they thought that they would know about it through their daily operations and they were going to test the pipeline to make sure it was not. I have no doubt that there is some odor. Um, one of the things they thought it might be is some operation at the sewerage plant. Um, it's different. It's different. Okay. We'll follow up with you then. Okay. Thank you. All right. I just had one that I quite. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed a hand. 
Okay, come on up. Hi, my name is Maria Alexeva. Maria? Maria Alexeva. Alex, E E V A. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so I'm living at 114, as my husband said. And my concern is that um, uh, this new operation, I don't know how it's called, how, how to call it a different way, they will bring new people, like about 25 or how many? Like 35? Oh, 35 people, and they're like different from different parts of the Long Island, and I know who they are. Uh, is it possible to make very clear for them not to explore their angry facilities and walk around and like look at the fences and something? Because um, we see people like perform some activities like from Northville, and they just in front of our bedrooms, and they there is no coverage the, with the fence and everything, and it's kind of like unsafe and. It, I don't know who they are, you know, and I don't know what uh, what the new people, how they will look like, so. Okay. Uh, Courtney, when you address that too, uh, Barbara had a question about education. I think I had read that Suffolk Community had a program for the trained wind farm operators, service people, and things of that nature. Is that, do you know if that's still going on, and is that a likely source of, of the people who would be um, – coming on the bus to go out to the uh, to, to go out on the vessel sure I'll, I'll answer both questions so uh, as far as the North Northville property which is not national grid property um, you know which is located next to Hoyt Lane uh, the the bus transfers and the crews as you could see are, are, are easily about a thousand feet away from from that property um, and they would be focused uh, purely in those six hours to transfer and get on the boat uh, and do their job so I don't anticipate um, this property affecting there, um, but certainly I'm sure she could count, talk to her local councilman um, about the Northville property uh, that National Grid does not own. Um, as far as the education, yes, Orsted does uh, have, uh, they're working with, uh, I would say, a lot of educational facilities, um, you know, in speaking with, uh, I would say, even from down to high school students, and it, it is, um, I think, across the board. Um, you know, a focus of all the energy companies to help educate people on the educational and on the energy jobs that are that are here. Um, and they do have a facility in, in uh, Suffolk community, and I think they're working with uh, you know other schools and programs as well to further educate people on it on this new exciting technology. Okay. All right. So it's not. I mean, it's not limited to any specific area where, where these people and, and and the people are all coming on the bus. So they're not. They're driving to Research Way to park That's their correct. car. That's correct. It was a, a concerted effort to ensure that <clears throat> the parking was not happening within the village. That that this was coming from uh, outside the village, and that you wouldn't have those amount of cars or trips on the roads here. Okay. All right. Barbara's got a follow-up. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, if we look at this as a maintenance op operation, you said uh, that the boat would be like a little uh, maintenance kind of thing. How, how long is the lease for? Seven years. Seven years? Okay. So there are a lot of projects that are going to benefit from this boat. Um, and if it goes past the seven years, let's say they go to renew, do you see those trailers becoming permanent? Not trailers themselves, but um, putting up structures that are a little bit more durable or? The, the majority, again, for research way, that's where they're going to be housing a lot of the parts and the structures and things that are going along with the wind farm. This is just a, uh, solely for that service vessel and and the people during those six hours i uh, we do not anticipate it being more and, and as you uh heard miss garvey say before from orsted um this is where they're calculating in all of their wind farms um that they have in construction and permitting okay thank you okay. was there a follow-up uh, before i go to you did you have something additional something new Um, so one of my many hats at NatGrid is I'm actually the facility security officer, and nobody gets onto my site without being vetted 
they need to have a form of ID and they need to have a contact and a reason to be there. So nobody is just allowed to walk in and be like, I'm gonna go for a hike. It's not anything that will ever, ever happen. The folks that are gonna be coming on those sprinter vans, they'll be checked in at the northerly gate. Um, we're gonna have to have crew manifests and it's all gonna have to go through me, so it's, you know, as secure as it can be. Because we're also a MARSEC secure facility, so we, we are governed by the U.S. Coast Guard. Could we, oh. get, a, so. could we get a point of contact for anybody if we, if we need to address any issues directly with you, or how does it work? Regarding, Regarding people, people on site? Around, yeah. So people don't wander around my site? They're there for a purpose. So if there are people behind your house, it's because they're contracted to be there to work in that particular location. Sunday morning. Kind of thing. No, that happens Sunday morning several times. That's why I'm asking that. So well, they do. Yeah. They do cut the lawn on the right of way on the weekends. Um, everybody is signed in at the guard booth that's on property. So there's no point. To is, is, is there a complaint number he can call? Can you provide him with that? But my uh, neighbor, she has more detail. She has video, she has pictures, she has, you know. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds like, Mr. Beyond, to, yeah. to, mm -hmm. sounds it, like. The neighbor said they were going to send me that information. But, and no, it's, it sounds like okay. he's been a great resource yeah. and very responsive. My suggestion is, if it's okay with you, would, that you would follow up sure. any, any kind of, if that's okay, hopefully. Yes, that's he seems great. That's so, okay. yes, and it, and you've gotten some response from him, which has been wonderful. So, so no, seems, I just wanted to ask follow-up question. Yes, 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 but I think he would be your point of contact. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is is it when they're when it's unoccupied? Will there be, is it guarded, is it, how's, what's the surveillance like when there's no one there? Sorry to make you keep getting up. No, it's a, I'm sure there are a lot of questions because nobody's allowed to actually really go on there without permission. So I have a closed circuit television system. We have um, an undisclosed amount of cameras uh, they are monitored by 24-hour uh, uh, surveillance. So we have operators that are there 24 hours a day. There are guards in the booth 24 hours a day. And then Monday through Friday, 6.30 to 3.30 or 7 to 5, whatever it is, I have several cameras in my office as well. They are also monitored by um, our security uh, headquarters in Massachusetts. At any given time, they can come in, they can look around and see what's going on. But we have very diligent guards. Um, the crew on the overnights and on the weekends, they do um, like hourly rounds. And um, it's just, it's very secure. I, I'm sorry, before you sit down, is the total property fenced in? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so if you And in some areas, especially in the, um, the Matthews Preserve, it's double fenced. Okay, because there, there are people who are riffraff and would hop a fence, and I just want to know how feasible no, that they're, is. Well, they're very high. They have barbed wire. Okay. Um, we have motion detectors. And, and you, you have know. security at the gates. Oh, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You have a follow-up? Uh, in the back, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So I'm just wondering, uh, every month the crew transfer will happen and like, I was thinking, I'm um, just wondering, will the crew be like, for example, once they leave, are they going to go straight to their homes or is there a chance to, you know, mingle amongst like um, everyone in town or, or, I mean, like, are they going to be, let's say, I mean, I feel it's always been a little bit of a struggling area financially, that dock area has been like kind of, but I was thinking maybe if more people are circulating through it could incre you know the restaurants could do better there or something I'm not sure but I'm just wondering like 
what is going to be the protocol in terms of like the crew? Are they going to go straight to their homes separately, or are they going to be able to, you know, tour the town? Or just, just wondering about that. Thank you. Yeah, I think I mean maybe I can answer that. I think there's no restriction on once you. It's it's like any job. If if you finish uh, finish working, you're not under any control to go anywhere. I, it, you know, some people may come back, but they're coming back from Setauket. So would they come back to the village? They might. Um, there's no control over that. There's no restrictions that you could possibly place on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have another? All right. Um, as far as the harbor front, is, there, are, is, this, is this project going to have any additional restrictions for boaters, the, har the people who are there? Is there going to be any plans to move moorings or anything along that line to accommodate the boat that's going to be there. I know Murphy's Marine is right next to it. So, <laughs> no problem. So I'm going to go to the SOV vessel itself. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So as part of the due diligence of, of selecting this site, um, we had to do a lot of surveys, bathymetric, looking at moorings. Um, and as you could see, the size of the vessel is actually less than the ferry and less than the existing national grid barge. So we do not anticipating uh, moving anything within the harbor uh, nor the mm. pier to accommodate the vessel. It'll, it'll sit there with the barge at the same time. They will the not barge? be. They will not be there at the same time. Okay, got it. Sorry to make you repeat yourself. It's okay. That's <laughs> what we're here for. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman on the aisle. First, had his hand up first. Ron Cagle, 10 Maple Avenue, Pokwa. Hi, Sue. I'm just curious where the wind farm is and where it's uh, what it's going to consist of. I haven't heard anything about that. Oh, okay. Well, I guess there's three wind farms we should get information on, and I guess that's maybe Jennifer? I don't know. Just a guess. Hi there. Say my name again. Jennifer Garvey, head of uh, New York Market Strategy for Orsted. Uh, so all of the wind farms, the wind turbines themselves, will be located in a lease area that Orsted um, holds the, you know, the rights to. Uh, it's located, its closest point to New York is about 30 miles east of Montauk, and that's where um, the, the, the closest turbine would be for Sunrise Wind, and then it's a, it's a big area, and so we can accommodate multiple wind farms. That's why I've mentioned we've got Revolution Wind, South Fork Wind, Sunrise Wind, and there could be additional uh, turbines in that big area over time. Doesn't mean they'll all be serviced by the same SOV. That's just for um, the three that I've mentioned. Okay, so the three of them are close together, off Mo way off Montauk, 30 miles off Montauk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, gentleman with the sunglasses. Hi, uh, Jeremy Flint, 38 Chestnut Avenue. Flint. Flint. F L I N T. I do. Um, I'll apologize uh, if this is redundant, but we got here a little bit late, so again, apologies. Um, I know, I believe that the variant or the um, the documentation that we were given for the not notice uh, was for up to four trailers, and I do see that you have one. Um, has anything been shown yet where the other three might potentially be? Has that been discussed yet? Is that already been presented? And if it has, I'd be for time's sake, I'd be if it's online or on this, I, I'd be happy to go back and look. And then uh, this it's a two-part question. Sorry, the second question is, um, is, this, is this project going to produce enough traffic? Have there been any discussions about um, uh, putting up a traffic light or signal at the entranceway to, on, uh, on 25? Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so if you look at the screen, this is the four trailers uh, that we would be presenting. It's in the existing uh, gravel area uh, on the National Grid property. Um, and so all four of them can be are 8 by 20 and can be in within that area. Uh, as far as uh, uh, traffic, um, we did uh, traffic and looked at traffic based on the sprinter vans, which is going to be once a month. Um, which would be two sprinter vans. So over the course of the month, it, they would be coming 
one time uh, with those two sprinter vans. Okay. So it doesn't warrant. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Questions? Audience? Board? Yes, you may ask one more question. This, uh, just out of curiosity, yes, go. the um, ship, when it's not at, do at dock here in Port Jeff, and it's not out at sea, where would its home base be? Or would it be? Uh, so I think it's, well, again, it's going to be traveling between all the different wind farms. Um, I'm sh there's probably also to Block Island over in, in Rhode Island as well. Um, and there would be different areas. So, but it is not intended to stay here. Okay. That was we'll part of the discussion. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. That's all we have at the same okay. time. Um, I think we're at the point where we're just waiting for comments, uh, whether it's for that property that's adjacent, that's um, maintained, uh, the maintenance operators of that, um, get some comments on that. And uh, also any public comment, which I, if we get within the next 30 days, we'll be at the point of the next meeting. I think at this point, since we're just waiting for comments, we can close the public hearing. I don't know if any discussion on that, but. Make a motion to close the public hearing. All right, second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll probably, see, hopefully, if you have comments uh, back from that group, we'll see you at we could see you at the next meeting. Is that 30 days? It's a little bit less than 30. So, oh, by the way, uh, for the public, all comments can be uh, dropped off at the Village Planning Department on uh, North Country Road or, or even mailed there. They should be written, though, with your name. Name on it would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Island, is it all the yes. same? Oops.